All right, let me do a little garden tour. Uh, today is June. I'm lying. Yeah, June. June. Six. Yeah, six. Today, June six. I had to think about that one. Uh, but I wanted to show y'all some things and talk about pests and talk about some stuff to worry about and some stuff not to worry about. I see so many people. Uh, they worry about every little creepy crawly that they see on their plants. I mean, every single one. Let me wait a minute. Let me start over here. Let me get my spray ball. So I was out here spraying, and while I was out here in the garden, I, I peeped game. I thought I saw an oak. I leaned one way and didn't see you. Leaned the other way and saw you. Uh-huh. You're going to come up out of there. I see this flower here. I want to. I got a female on these watermelons out here. And I want to take this and pollinate this. I don't have to do this, but it rained earlier today a lot. And when it's raining like that, the bees ain't really flying. You know, I don't want to miss now, Mella. Okay, y'all. So I was out here spraying my BT and spinosad. I mix this that together. I find it work better when I mix it together. You do what work for you. Your mileage may vary. But uh, first of all, I want to say this: when it come to brassicas, everybody gonna tell you brassicas don't do good in the heat. Blah 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 blah. That's a lie. They do fine in the heat. They don't care about the heat. Uh, I don't know where people got that idea from. Well, maybe they're not telling. Maybe they're forgetting to tell a fool. Whatever, whatever. Brassicas do fine in the heat. They don't care nothing about the heat. As long as you keep them watered. They don't care anything about the heat. What cares about the heat is the bugs and the humans. And it becomes hard. Maybe them blueberry. They're right on time. Anyway. It becomes hard for the human to take the pests that the brassicas have. I have never had an issue with my brassicas growing in the heat. I even had old heads tell me, you need to plant them collars in a ball. And when I asked them why, I don't know, that's just what my daddy said to do. Your daddy said to do that because that's a daddy long leg spider on there. Y'all see that? Can y'all see that spider there? Y'all see him? Shake you off. Okay, he down on the ground now. I don't know if y'all can see him. He brown. He blend in so good. I ain't seen no daddy long leg spider. I don't know how long. And that blueberry was falling down. You're going to let the daddy long leg spider get you. Not today. I'm going to eat. See, I ain't been out here three or four days because it keep raining. Uh-uh. Them blueberries done come off of there. See, they loose in the bag already. See, people can say if they want by bird netting and all that that's cool but y'all see how them berries have fallen out and they was in that bag if that bag hadn't been on there y'all the mosquito if that bag hadn't been on there oh uh, they uh god leave these mosquitoes around hold on y'all i can't hang them be able to do it they about to carry me away from here i'm, I'm about to have a problem Y'all hold one second. I'm going to be right back. Good Lord. When you see one light down and got six of them flying around your head, you have to do something. It's ridiculous how these mosquitoes eat. Like I said, it's been raining three or four five days. Y'all see that water out in the street? All they do is just draw. It draw in. Everything would like water. But anyway, like I was saying about these organza bags, I'll take them off gently now because I got several of them ready here. Oh, shit, y'all can't see what I'm doing. I'm just picking the berries. But, uh, that organza bag would catch them blueberries. Whereas if you had bird netting, them things would be on the ground. And I'm so <sighs> ants and stuff be done ate them. See? Wait a minute. See that? That one didn't come off. But it's in that bag, see? So, and I know when your blueberry bushes get big, it's probably time prohibitive to put these bags on here. But I had several people in the comments. Oh, I just use bird netting. Yeah, you can do that too. And guess what? Bird netting get caught. Birds get caught up in that netting too. 
Then you got to come out there and get the birds out. See, that's the part that don't tell you. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Uh, and birds ain't so friendly when you're trying to get them out of that stuff either. I ain't saying it always help them. I'm just saying it can help them. I'm going to try to sneak this back on and we're going to try to get on back on track. Because I still got stuff to tell y'all. Okay, so I was out here uh, spraying. And I want to say this. Like I was saying, collards, they don't have no problem in the heat. They will grow in the heat. I hate to say it anybody telling you they won't grow in the heat. I'm not sure why they're telling you that. I just think maybe people, whew, that's, that, was, that was too far gone. That sucker just mashed up in my hand. Uh, the truth is, the bugs, you got to fight the bugs tooth and nail. Do they go to seed at the beginning of the season? Yeah, well, they, they might cut the tops out. A couple of them trying to go to seed again. But you see these ain't. Now, let me say this. When it comes to your brassicas, you got to spray before you see damage. Before. Um, if you can. Like I said, we've been getting rain three or four days in a row. It's hard. But anytime we don't get rain for a couple of days, I go ahead and spray. You want to know why? Them bugs, probably them three days while it's been raining, them butterflies have been laying them babies. When it stops raining, that's usually when they hatch out. And they're going to start eating. It's probably bug, uh, bug eggs out here. I ain't checked and looked. I got too many greens to be doing that for y'all think I'm finna turn all them leaves over would y'all turn all them leaves over can't do it I ain't got I ain't doing it um you can see I got a little bit of damage so don't think that the stuff don't come get me it gets me but I have to hurry up and get on it but like I said a lot of those worms gonna start hatching out the next two or three four days when it ain't supposed to rain uh and it and I have learned that trial and error I try to wait until I see a little damage and then try to spray no no by the time you spray it's too late when you, your stuff be lace I'm gonna I'm gonna show y'all right quick what I'm talking about because I, I like to show people people be on YouTube talking that trash and they ain't even showing you what they talking about I'm gonna go out on the limb and say if they don't show you don't believe nothing they say that's just me personally I'm gonna be for real with you believe None of what you hear and half of what you see. I'm just going to go on and tell you. Don't believe nothing that these people are saying if they're not show, showing it to you. Ooh, I'm about to show you how to go down out here and slick. I'm telling you, it's been raining. Uh, it's been raining, raining, raining. This is, I hope Mr. Grando watching. See that tower you sent me? It's back, baby girl. Look at it. Back with a vengeance. That sucker's pretty, too. That sucker's pretty. It grew last year, and I thought the sucker died, but I think it just, I don't know what happened. Hell, it come back this year, and I'm happy. I'm just happy it came back. I don't know if y'all can see how wet this ground is. If y'all can hear my feet squishing out here. Uh, where I'm going? I'm going too far. That's what I'm doing. Going way too far. I want to show y'all back here. Now, back here is where I hadn't been spraying. My, 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 my stuff, I started from the cutoffs. All of them too, just about. I got two or three that didn't take. Like for instance, this right here. This one clearly, it didn't take. This one didn't take. This one didn't take. See what I'm saying? So, you'll have, that's why I told you, plant more than what you think. But see there? That's why I told y'all you should only worry about it. See all these stem? I ain't been more studying that. I sprayed that today. That'd be all right. Y'all think. When stuff get ate up like that, it's demoralizing, I guess, to a point. But be patient. That's going to grow back. Them leaves, I, I think some of y'all think these plants have emotions. Like when the bugs be eating them, you hear them screaming. That ain't the case. They don't feel it. They'll be all right. They'll be just fine. Uh, back here, I got a bunch of figs and things. I got some elder flowers. One of these days, I'm going to figure out. What to do with this stuff? There's some elderflower soda that I like, made by Fentimans. It's real good if y'all can find Fentimans in the store. But these things is pretty and boiled, they smell good. But once they get pollinated, they start looking like this here. All those little green balls, they're gonna turn into elderberry. But let me go back up here to the front and tell y'all, finish telling y'all what I'm telling y'all. So that's your brassicas. Brassicas will grow in the heat. They don't care about the heat. They don't slow down. They don't do none of that stuff. Matter of fact, I find brassicas speed up in the heat. Brassicas grow slow for me in the wintertime. It's just that in the wintertime, I ain't got to spray them. I ain't got to do nothing to them. 
But uh, they grow just fine in the heat. You just have to ask yourself, do I want to fight the bugs or not? If you don't want to fight the bugs, don't grow brassicas. Some of y'all be trying to do too much. You be stressing your own self out. I would suggest highly against that. What sense do it make for you to be the one stressing yourself out? Don't make sense to me. Now see, once I done figured out my bite BT and spinal head, baby, I ain't studying that. I ain't studying that. Spray that and move on. Like I told you, in the back, I hadn't been spraying. That's why it looked like that. I sprayed today. Watch, I'm going to show y'all how it's going to bounce back. I'm going to show y'all. I done showed you before. Because, I mean, I done grow. I, I grow just about the same thing every year with the exception of a few things. Now, let me go over here. These greens I have over here, you see the, uh, look here. See all these, y'all probably, look all these beans down in here. Wait a minute. I got to get you a good view. There you go. So, y'all see beans on here. I'm not actively harvesting these beans to eat anymore. I am uh, growing these beans now for seed, okay? So that I could save me some uh, great northern seed so that I can uh, grow them again when the time is appropriate. I'm also pulling out oak trees in here. I got to keep in mind squirrels, bear, acorns all year long, so I'm fighting the oaks constantly. But these mustards, so the mustards going back to seed, and I know y'all gonna say, "Oh, rip them out!" Wait a minute. First of all, let me say this: How many of y'all have eaten this part of the mustard green, the the blossoms before they open? You can eat them after they're open as well. How many of y'all done ate them? Nobody? If you like spicy stuff, like if you want something spicy or something to throw on your salad, you can also eat this, the immature seed pods. Don't wait till they get dry and hard. When they're green and young and tender, eat them. I'm going to tell you what this tastes like. When you break this off like this, y'all see what that look like? Look like a tiny little broccoli floret, don't it? That sucker is spicy. It tastes like spicy broccoli. That's what it tastes like. I mean, and if you like just a little bit of, like if you like radish, because your radish is probably unbolted by now. I'm going to tell you this too. Your radishes, when they go to seed, those little green seed pods, eat them things. I keep telling y'all the best stuff to eat in the garden. Now, if you don't like spicy stuff, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. Uh, and I'm not talking about so spicy to where you can't hardly handle it because I get heartburn. But I'm telling you, this here, once this go to seed, oh, to me, that's so good in a salad. Those little, just those little tops. And if you're trying to save some of your seeds, don't eat them all. But you can eat some of them, see? you get a few of these suckers. And if you don't do like me, but like I said, you can, you can eat them when they open too. But don't wait till they open. Or you can get you a bunch of them. They ain't gonna do nothing but sprout out again and give you some more. Ooh, that's hot, baby. That's that's spicy there. That's good. Anyway, y'all get all of your harvest. So many people they're not getting all you need to be getting everything you can get out of this garden. You taking your time to nourish the soil and grow this stuff. Get all of it. Now, let me get to talking about what I was gonna talk about a while ago. Um like I said, these brassicas, I'm not going to pull them just yet because y'all want to know what these flowers is doing. So the bees, they were over here behind the onions. But after the onions kind of slowed down flowering, they left this area. And I'm not saying they won't find your flowers, they will. And so will other pollinators. But I got these watermelons here. And look at this. Y'all see the little female? If the bees and stuff be preoccupied, they may come over here and say, oh, wait a minute. There's some more blooms down here. Because my watermelons is coming in. You see what I'm saying? Because you can just see the watermelons is coming on in. So y'all be aware of that. Also, I, I, I do have red uh, giant red mustard seeds. But I... Uh, get this oak out of here. But I uh, want to save me some more. My seeds still germinate just fine. But I want to save me a fresh uh, batch of seeds. So did I have them because I bought those seeds once and I'm telling you red mustards are so delicious and make such good seeds as 
just good common sense to uh, do that. Now, let me say this. Uh, on plants, like your watermelons, cucumbers, squash, y'all know how y'all see those tiny, tiny little ants? We call them sweet ants. They like, they basically, they like sugar. They like sweet stuff. Um, all ants like sweet stuff, but those sweet ants, that's all they do is really search out sweet stuff in your garden uh, to eat on. And uh, they don't really do much else, meaning they don't really do any damage or anything. Uh, if there's aphids on there, they will entertain those aphids because those aphids and the sweet honeydew that they give off. You'll also see them on your okra plants. You'll see the other ants on your okra plants too. You see uh, fire ants and all that on your okra plants. Look y'all, don't pull your hair out over every little thing. Some of those ants on there just eating pollen. That's all they're doing. They're not doing no harm to nothing. Um, and I thought I would alert y'all to that because I think so many people have been taught, oh, your plants should be grown with nothing on them and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And if it's anything on them, get it off and all this. Look here. The ladybug ain't even got all the little dots yet, but look at that one. That's a pretty one there. I give the camera a focus. That's a pretty one there. But, uh, but y'all, some of them ants, some sweet ants, and, and I'm be honest, ants on your okra, this is what y'all do, any plant. Look at your plant when you notice it got some ants on it, and I'm talking about ants in specific. Look and see, do I see any visible damage? If you don't see no damage, walk off. Come back the next day. Look and see, do, do I see any damage? If if you don't see any, just remarkable damage, walk off. Come back the next, monitor that plant is what I'm saying. And if you never do see any bad damage, don't worry about that. Don't even worry about that. Y'all know I have ants on my okra every single year. I have ants on my peas every single year. Guess what? These cow peas, I'm going to show y'all. I have aphids on them suckers every year. I spray them off a little bit, but they don't hurt the peas. And the plant grows so fast, it don't really hurt the plant. So I don't care. I'm not finna pull my hair out over something that ain't hurting the plant. If it ain't slowing down production... I'm moving around. Now, if it's slowing down production, like for instance, if some get on my okra and it's stopping it from making okra, different story. I got to handle that. Just like, you see, it's a little damage on this switch short. But I don't see a ton of damage when you look overall. See, look at this leaf. And then look at these. Do you see a whole bunch of damage? Nope. Pluck that one off, put him down. I don't see no bugs on him. I turn it over. I don't see no bugs on him. I don't know if that was damage from the storm or what. Y'all don't worry about each and everything. You will stress your own self. And, you know, you have to be careful and mitigate yourself because I'm going to be honest. I think some people were raised in stressful households and you're used to that and you think that that's normal. It's not. It's not. It ain't even close to being normal. It ain't normal for you to panic all the time. It ain't normal for you to stress all the time. It ain't none of that stuff normal. Who saw and let that shit go? I keep telling y'all to cuss, but you just you won't cuss one of these days. Y'all going to get it. And you know, it don't make you less of a Christian if you cuss. Uh, what was I going to say? But yeah, y'all, y'all just do your thug thizzle. Do your thug thizzle. Don't worry so much. Don't be out in the garden tripping so much. Look at all them pebbles, y'all. That's a pretty sight, boy. Ain't nothing like an overwhelming pepper. If anybody want Crayola seller seeds, if you're wondering what a Crayola seller pepper look like, this is it. Not fully ripened. These are spicy, but when you cook them, the spice mellows out quite a bit. You still have a little spice left, but not hardly any at all. To me, it's really good seasoning for your food. Those are the kind of peppers that I prefer to cook with. Those that are spicy, but when you cook with them, they mellow out some. Because uh, my heartburn won't let me do some of these. Y'all see how these oaks, when it really get the rain and these aching, they, they germinate like hell. But, uh... I mean, I come out here and in the same spot look like I pull up eight. Oh, almost dropped down. Y'all almost went for a trip. Every day I pull up Aiken. This is my life's work to undo what the squirrels do. Undo what the squirrels do. This two, three days, y'all. I'm telling you right now, you don't get these oaks out of here, you're going to wish you had them. Because they turn into a tree in no time flat. Don't take no time volunteer. Those are the lemon drop melons my homegirl sent me. 
the, that was the germination test on those seeds. I can pull those seeds, even though they're green. I took some out of a green pod, throw it down. I didn't count the seeds, but that's good enough germination for me to say I can pull those plants. So if you are getting to a point and you're wondering, can I pull these plants or do I have to let them get all the way dry? And I want to show y'all, a lot of them are dry. Y'all see how less dry. But up here, these are still yellow. So I'm going to go out on a limb and see if they're yellow. Probably can pull them. Um, but like I said, I do a germination test because the last thing I want to do is save a bunch of seeds and the germination is 10%. It's wasting my time. Uh, look here. I didn't spray over here for a while. These are volunteer. I had, uh, I want to say sprouting broccoli. I want to say this what I had was sprouting broccoli. And uh, this come up as a volunteer. Uh, I got all this comfrey. I got to cut it way back. Be careful when you plant your comfrey in between stuff. It will, uh, it'll, it'll do its thug fizzle. It don't care. So uh, you just, you know, but I keep it. I just brick off and cut back and it come right back. But uh, this is some huge comfrey. Y'all look at these leaves. And if y'all haven't seen some of the people who I've seen comfort to, y'all go over to Angela's Busy Bee Homestead and go, and go over there and see. That comfort she got, I sold it to her years ago. And uh, honestly, uh, we so cool now, shoot. We just, if it's something I want, she'll send it. She sent me them strawberries back there. Uh, and if it's something she want, I'll just send it. I don't even worry about getting no money. Y'all Y'all will figure out real soon. I, they don't fade me none. Uh, I'd rather have the plants, like I said, over over 40 percent of my garden is stuff that is from stuff that people people have given me uh a lot of this stuff is not stuff i procured on my own like those pomegranates over there one of my grew from seed the other one is a white pomegranate that was a gift um but y'all y'all look at my sweet potatoes um they looking good too my onions ain't looking the best best i forget where i got these onions from i probably won't get onions from there anymore um they are bulbing but they just look like, they look like, which is time to pull them. But they just did not bub and I fed them like how they were supposed to be. I'm just leaving them. Hopefully they get a little bigger. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I also wanted to show you this here. Bull show where you can use that neem for those roly polies. Spray that stuff when it's cool. Now I spray it in the evening. Let it set overnight. Don't spray that stuff up in the day when the sun up. It'll, it'll fry your stuff like chicken. But I want to show y'all. Roly polies had eight. This, uh, what is this? Pippin's Golden Honey had ate that pepper down to where it wasn't nothing but stems. Now look at it. It's got leaves. This is another one. It ate this one too, but it didn't eat it as bad. Now when it started getting halfway decent leaves, some of these bottom leaves I just take off. It'll just promote some more top growth. Those are two Pippin. These are the other two Pippin Honey Golden. So out of all the seeds I dropped, and you can see where the roly polis had got hold of this too. But you can see it's starting to make peppers already, which is good. I'm glad to see that. So I'm just going to brick off some of this lower stuff and encourage it to branch. And just brick off some of these leaves with this damage and stuff. The roly polis will probably get down there and eat those. Uh, Y'all can see the peas climbing the pole. But anyhow, this wasn't supposed to be no tour. But I'm just showing y'all. Y'all do me a favor and just relax relax and chill out and uh don't worry about every every single bug some bugs or uh, you do need to stay on top of um squash bugs and things like that stay on top of those the minute you let them get out of order it's, it's over they kill your plants um so but y'all just you know if you see sweet ants or things like that most time they're not doing no damage aphids will do damage so um depending on how your plant looking like i said monitor your plants that's the main thing y'all need to be doing. You don't need to be stressing. You need to be monitoring your plants. When you see problems, you see damage, just think to myself, how I'm going to handle it, what I'm going to do. And just take care of it, y'all, all right? So, till next time, see you guys later.